Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. And today's problem is in the following pedigree, what is the inbreeding coefficient of person A? And first definition of inbreeding coefficient. It is a probability that person A at any given locus would have two identical alleles inherited from the common ancestor. And let me show you example. Who is going to be a common ancestor of the person A? Could it be this person, this, this, or this, or maybe this? Actually, only one person here can be common ancestor, and this is going to be his great grandmother here, because only she can pass the same allele from both mother side of person A and father side of person A. For example, great grandfather here only can pass his alleles through one side, so he cannot pass two identical alleles. And uh, this great grandfather also can pass only uh, one allele uh, and not two alleles. But great grandmother can pass two identical alleles from uh, both sides. Let me show you example. Let's say uh, for the gene A, great grandmother uh, at locus A would have two alleles, dominant allele A and recessive allele A. And what is the probability that she is going to pass dominant allele A to her son? And it's going to be one half. And what is the probability that her son would pass also this allele that he got from his mother's side? And of course, at this locus, he is going to have two alleles, another allele he is going to get from his father's side. I'm not going to show this allele. It's not important for our calculations. And the probability is going to be one half. And again, this person would have two alleles, one inherited from uh, her father's side and another inherited from her mother's side. I'm also not showing this allele here. It's not important for our calculations. And probability that she's going to get, uh, she's going to uh, transmit this uh, allele, dominant allele A to her son is going to be one half because she's going to have two such alleles. So this is how person A can get dominant allele at the locus A for the gene A from his mother's side. But also uh, his great grandmother can give this dominant allele to her other son. And uh, probability is also going to be the same one half and one half here and one half here. So you see the same allele can be inherited by the person A from both sides. So he's going to be going to have two identical alleles inherited from the same person who is going to be a common ancestor. And these alleles are going to be identical by descent. And probability, as you see, is going to be, so genotype capital A capital A is going to be one half multiplied by one half multiplied by one half and by one half and by one half and by one half. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And we are going to get one over 64. But this is not the only one possibility here. This person A also can get recessive allele from his common ancestor. Probability that, for example, from his mother's side, he is going to get this recessive allele is going to be uh, as follows. Again, the same probability, one half here, one half here, one half here. This is how he can get this recessive allele. And also he can get it from his father side. This is how he can get two identical recessive alleles from common ancestor, his great grandmother. And he may have at locus A, 
two identical alleles, which is going to be two recessive alleles, and probability is going to be the same. We have six passes, and probability for each one would be one half, and one over 64 would be probability that he is going to have two identical alleles inherited from the common ancestor for the locus A. And this is not the end of our calculations. Uh, the question is uh, to find coefficient of uh, inbreeding. So we have to add these two probabilities that he is going to be identical at locus A for the same allele. And these alleles are going to be identical, inherited from the common ancestor. And the probability is going to be 1 over 64 plus 1 over 64. And it's going to be 2 over 64 or 1 over 32. And now I want to show you shortcut method. So this is going to be our answer. And shortcut method is going to be just to calculate nodes. So we calculate nodes excluding uh, the person of our interest for whom we do these calculations and including common ancestor. So how many nodes we have here? This is going to be one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five nodes. And our calculations would be as follows. One half in a power of five. And the answer is going to be one over 32. The same answer as we got before, but now it's much faster. And this is going to be our answer. Now I hope you understand uh, the logic behind these calculations. And now you would know uh, the shortcut method, which would going to save you a time on your exam. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.